Hello, welcome to unit 2 in your reader. Are you ready? Today we are going to talk about something very interesting and that's about the tsunami. I'm sure all of you have heard about the tsunami, haven't you? I'm sure you have and you have seen pictures, lots of visuals of the tsunami. Let's begin. Are you ready? Now, when we think of the tsunami, what are some of those words which come to your mind? To my mind, I can certainly think of the sea, and not a very calm sea, but a sea which is rising and rising dangerously. Lots of waves hitting the shore, destroying many things. These are some of the words, ideas, things that come to my mind. Anything more? Let's use a big word now. When we think of the tsunami, we think of the word devastation. Devastation. Destroying everything on its way. And so today we will read about the tsunami. Where it happened, what happened and what were its effects. We will look at all these things today. Shall we? Okay. Look at page 24 where you have a map in your book. Can you see the map? That's right. That's the map of our own Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Can you see it there? Can you read the places that are mentioned there in the map? Right from the top? That's good. North Andamans, Middle Andamans, South Andamans, and in between, you also find Port Blair, which is the capital of the Andaman Nicobar Islands, and so on. Good. So, we have seen the map and we have read the map. Take a little look at that. Now, turn the page over. There is a picture there on that page. What do you see in that picture? Destruction. Can you see a car which is there, washed away, and all the other destruction that you can see there? Can you? That is an example of a tsunami. So, a tsunami is a huge disturbance in the sea, which occurs. And when it happens, it washes ashore, and when it comes ashore, and it just washes away everything that, you, that it finds on its way. Shall we start reading now? Excellent. Good. Now look at part 1. As you look at part 1, you will find the name of somebody there. What's that person? Ignatius. Say it again. Ignatius. Ignatius. Who is Ignatius? Well, he is a manager who is there on the island. Oh, very good. Um, our story of the tsunami begins with Ignatius. Take a look at the last paragraph there. Now, what happens? There was the tsunami. And uh, look at the last paragraph in that page. And you will find people who have been washed away by the sea in the tsunami. Can you quickly see who all have been washed away? I can find people like his father, brother, his wife. And who were saved? His three children who stayed with him. Continue with it. Go on to the next page. Now you'll find more, more and more people who have died in the tsunami. Take your pencils now. Are you ready? Right. Start underlining all those who
who have died in the tsunami there. Good, begin from the top. You can find somebody like Sanjeev. Did you see Sanjeev? That's good. Okay. Then you will also find more members. You can find Sanjeev, his wife, his daughter, John, John's wife, and then go on, go down, go down a little bit. You can find Meghna there, her parents, seven others. Oh my God. So many people were washed away. But who was saved? Meghna. Meghna was saved there. Good. And now go down a little more. You will find Alma. Alma's father. Grandfather. And the next paragraph. Her mother. Now, in the last paragraph, you can see that Alma was saved. And how was she saved? That's good. A log of wood saved her. So, when you look at this list again, take a look at this list again. Now you see how many people have vanished. And who are they? They are all members of the same family. Neighboring families. And so, lots of people have been just washed away. Gone. Dead. And that is tsunami for us. Now, you can add some more words to your idea of tsunami and so on. So, you can see how much destruction a tsunami can cause. All right. Uh, look at the top of page 27. To your right, there is one word there. What is that word? Traumatized. Say it again, traumatized. And what is traumatized? The definition is given there. It says, greatly shocked and distressed. You know shocked. And distressed is very disturbed. Absolutely. And we used a very big word like devastated. And what does traumatized come from? What is its root word? The root word is trauma. T-R-A-U-M-A. -A. What does trauma mean? Trauma means a lot of mental disturbance. If you go to hospital, you will find the word trauma in the hospitals. And what does it basically mean? It means somebody who has been mentally highly disturbed. And so, one of the effects of tsunami is that the person who is alive, is traumatized, disturbed, distressed, completely shaken, just cannot speak. The mind doesn't work. It's dead. Can't even think. And the person looks dazed, looks at only one spot, completely lost. Very difficult, isn't it? So it's an extremely uh, shocking state of affairs, we can say. All right. Now, look at those comprehension questions. Can you see them there? Right. In those comprehension questions, um, you can uh, read some of them. Say whether the following is true or false. Shall we do one? Okay. Let me read for you. It says, for example, Ignatius lost his wife, two children, his father-in-law and his brother-in-law in the tsunami. Is this true or false? Check. Check your list. Lost his wife, his father-in-law and so on and so forth. All of them. Is it true? Yes. It is true. Good. Let's look at the second example. It says, for example, Sanjeev made it to safety after the tsunami. Is this true? Did Sanjeev make it after tsunami? Was he alive? No, he wasn't. So, this statement is false. Now, you can do the rest of them with your friends later on. Let's move on to part two, shall we? In part two, we are going to read about 
a girl from Britain who has come to Thailand for a holiday at the beach. And what's her name? Tilly Smith. Tilly Smith is a high school girl and they are all in a place called Phuket and they are enjoying a holiday on the beach with her parents. What are her parents names? Can you see their names? Look at that paragraph there on page 27 and her parents were Penny and Colin Smith. Did you find it? Good. Now they were on a holiday. They were enjoying on the beach and Tilly is very happy and so are Ev. Everybody is very happy there. All are enjoying at the beach. Beautiful beach. Lovely sunshine. Now, something happens. Tilly suddenly sees big waves in the sea and these waves are getting bigger and bigger. Now, she remembers something that her geography teacher had told her in their class back there in England. She remembered suddenly that when there is an earthquake under the sea, then because of the earthquake, the sea waves rise and they become bigger and bigger and they gradually move towards the shore and they can hit the shore with great force and that's a tsunami. Oh, suddenly she remembers that. So, she watches the waves and now she starts shouting, shouting at everybody and says, run, run. There is something which is happening now, which is a tsunami. And so all of you run and all of them who were there on the beach run towards their hotel, just right behind. And they all run into the hotel just in time when the tsunami hits the beach. And now they are all in the hotel, on the third floor of the hotel, standing them and then watching the sea. And all of them suddenly discover the power of tsunami. And they are all terrified. They can't speak, but they all are witnesses to the tsunami. Good. Now, having seen that, they are all very safe. And how are they safe? Thanks to Tilly. Thanks to her warning. Well in time, just in time. So, now, uh, they are all safe in the hotel. And so now, that is part two. And now let's look at the comprehension check questions at the bottom of the page. Are you ready? Look at the comprehension questions. Here, it says, answer the following in a phrase or a sentence. Are you ready? Good. Shall I read the questions for you? And you can answer them. Not very difficult, I'm sure, now that you have heard the story. Uh, why did Tilly's family come to Thailand? Why did they come there? Yeah, for a holiday. Now look at the rest of the questions. What were the warning signs that both Tilly and her mother saw? And so on and so forth. You can read the questions and you can answer them later. It's fairly easy for you. Now turn the page over. On this page, which is page 29, you see a picture of a boy. Is he sitting alone? No. He is sitting with his dog. Is he happy? No. He is very disturbed. The dog is running around? No. The dog is also very disturbed. So what do we see now? Let's look at part 3. In part 3, we are going to see some very interesting information. Now, part 3 talks about animals and birds and their behavior. What is special about their behavior? Take a look at that. Now, in this section, you will hear a new word. And what is that new word there? The word is sixth sense. Can you see that sixth sense on the page? Yes. How many senses do we have? Five. 
What are these five senses? We have the sense of sight, we have the sense of touch, we have the sense of smell, we have the sense of taste and then we also have the sense of sound. We have five senses. Do we have a sixth sense? We will come to that in a minute. But animals, we are told, have one extra smells, sense and that is what we call the sixth sense. And what is that? It says, the text says, look at that very carefully, animals can sense disturbances in the earth. Which means, if there is going to be an earthquake sometime soon, animals can listen to that noise, that disturbance. And so, animals can find out, can know, can understand that there is some kind of a disturbance and disturbance in the earth, some earthquake. And so much so that even if there is an earthquake in the sea, animals because of this sixth sense, when they hear the disturbance in the earth, they move away, away from danger. And so, the text says that when you look at the number of humans who died in the tsunami and compare that with the animals, you find very few animals dead. And so, animals have a sixth sense. Question is, you can also say, do we have a sixth sense? Do we? Do you think we have? I think we have. You know, sometimes, supposing you are coming on the bicycle to the school or your bus is coming on, somebody starts crossing the road there and you see that person there. And if you quickly calculate the time that person is going to take to come to the road, your sixth sense tells you that that person will be right in front of you. So, what do you do? You apply brakes and stop and that person is right in front of you. That is our sixth sense. Something tells us that this cup of coffee is very hot and so we already take care because we see the steam coming out and it looks like very hot and so on. So, we also have a sixth sense. Let us close this section, turn to the next page where you find about this man who has his dogs and suddenly that day he discovers that his dogs do not want to go for a walk. Every day they run, but today they do not want to and he does not know why. However much he tries, the dogs refuse to go and so he is there, there at home and suddenly he discovered that there is a huge tsunami. There was an earthquake and a tsunami and the dogs knew about it and so who was saved? He was the gentleman was saved and so were the dogs and all of them were saved. Good. Um, we are now in page 30. Let us look at the comprehension questions. It says answer the following using a phrase or a sentence. Um, in the tsunami 150,000 people dead. How many animals died? What will you say? Maybe very few animals died and so on. So, you can read the rest of it and um, you can work on those questions later on with your friend's help. But let us move on to the exercises now. In task 1, working with the text, you have a few suggestions on things to do. For example, question 1 asks you to find some words and sentences in the text which talk about tsunami and so on and you can do them later. That is not very difficult for you because we have already started doing that. You can do more of that. And question 2, there are some words which you will use to describe Sanjeev. Can you see those words there? Yeah, cheerful, ambitious, brash, 
brave, careless, heroic, selfless, heartless, humorous words which describe a person in many ways and you can use all these words in describing Sanjeev in the next few sentences. Let us turn the page over. At the next page on top of the page, there is something which is very interesting for you. Look at question number 4. It says, what are the different ways in which Tilly's parents could have reacted to her behavior? What would you have done if you were in their place? You know what Tilly's parents did? They told their friends. Any other? That's right. Maybe they would have gone to television or they would have gone to the newspaper. They would have gone so many other things and so on. But the last question there is again very interesting for you. Take a look at that. It says, what are the different ideas about why so few animals were killed in the tsunami? Which idea do you find more believable? It says animals say do this, do that, do this, do that and which is what that which you think is very believable. A clue for you? Sixth sense? Remember that. Good. Now, we are now going to work with language. Are you ready now? So, it says there are in question number one, there are different movements which says fast movement, slow movement and rather slow, not fast at all and so on and so forth. And you can find again from the text, when you read the text, you can find all those expressions which describe all these different movements. Question number two again asks you to fill in the blank in the sentences below um, using the verb given in the bracket. This is also fairly simple for you. Let us do number one, for example, it says the earth trembled, but not many people felt the what? Tremble, it says. Trembling. Good, not many people felt the trembling. When the zoo was flooded, there was a lot of dash and many animals escaped into the countryside. Confuse. What is the right word? That? There was a lot of confuse? No, confused. No, confusion. Excellent. And now you can work on that. And similarly, the last exercise down there, it says study these sentences in column A and column B. And now you can write something about it in the next page. It says, good, you will find somebody doing something and somebody something happening to somebody else. And so the person who does something is called the doer. And the other person is the one who receives this action and so on. So, we do not need to spend much time there because you can also do the next one which says uh, whether the following sentences are in the active voice or passive voice. How do you know the active voice and passive voice? From the previous exercise, the doer is always the active voice. And if something is done to you, to you, you are the receiver, it is the passive voice, as simple as that. Now let us conclude this particular section. It says speaking and writing. Supposing you are one of the volunteers and so on and so forth, you can rewrite the story or you can also rewrite a diary or whatever you like. All those writing activities you can do with your friends. Let us now do something else. I want to show you something. I am now going to show you two little clippings of two scenes of tsunamis. You are going to watch those two short clippings.
Did you see these clippings? Did you like them? Was it awful? Terrible? Disturbing? Were you disturbed? Looking at those tsunamis, what they did? You saw the, how they swept away everything? That's it. That's a tsunami for you. And so, if we think of a tsunami, what shall we say a tsunami is? We can say a tsunami is therefore a rising in the sea. A rising because of an earthquake on the surface, of the, on, the, on, on, the, on the bottom of the sea. And on the surface, what do you find? Because of the disturbance, you will find the waves rising and rising and moving towards the shore in a dangerous way and destroying everything in that. So, is tsunami dangerous? Yes. Let's go one step further. A tsunami, does it give us a forewarning? Does it tell us before that I'm going to come, get ready? No, it doesn't. It comes all on a sudden. We have just to see it and then if we can, escape or else gone. Gone forever. Everything, our homes, our cars, our buildings, our factories, everything is gone forever. Now, let me ask you something else. Did we have something recently in the world which came to us without any warning and came all on a sudden and it came so suddenly that the world was not prepared for that and the result was so many were suddenly taken ill and many families destroyed, death all over the place. You know what it was? Yeah? Good. You are very good guessers. Yes. We are talking of the Corona virus, the COVID-19. Did it give us any warning? Maybe to somebody else, but to us? Not at all. Did it come like a flood? Yes. Were many people hospitalized? Yes. Isolated? Yes. We could not even touch them. No, we had to have what they call the PPE, the personal protection equipment. And how many have died? Oh, lakhs all over the world. So many countries. Every country is now affected. We can't travel. We can't go out of your home. We are in a lockdown. We are shut down completely. And we have to protect ourselves and so on. So can we say that Corona is also a kind of tsunami? Of course we can. Yes, Corona is also a kind of a tsunami. And like this, now you can think of many other experiences in our lives. Some of which may come without any announcement. They have never told you that I'm going to come and they come and we are not prepared and they come in such a way that we are simply devastated. And so it's a tsunami effect in our lives. Tsunami is only something that happens in the sea, in the ocean, but tsunami can happen in many other ways in our lives also. So did you enjoy the tsunami? Good, fine. 